Shalom. First and foremost, all praise is going to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone. Also, peace and blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect Tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, diligently listening and learning. France's President Emmanuel Macron urges Europe to reduce dependency on the U.S. and stay away from the Taiwan conflict. So we're continuing to see um, escalations with these European nations against the U.S. And now you have uh, the French President Emmanuel Macron urging the European nations to stay out of the uh, what is eventually going to become the U.S.-Taiwan-China conflict. Because understanding that um, the way that the EU and NATO was set up, the European nations are allies to America. So when the U.S. does go over there and get into the full scale conflict with China, all the European nations are going to be dragged into it. So Emmanuel Macron, he's not with it. All right, and I remember early last year when Russia invaded Ukraine. I don't think it was Macron, but I think it was another guy that was running for office over there in France. He said that if he gets in, France was going to leave NATO and the European Union. All right. So they would have pulled a Brexit. All right. So, yeah, you're continuing to see this theme of the beast. OK, which is the NATO and the EU. <clears throat> and uh, we'll get into some brief history on that. Uh, to show you that this is indeed the case, you know, is going to hate the whore, which is um, America, Babylon the Great. So getting into the article, it says French President Emmanuel Macron asserted that Europe must reduce its dependency on the United States and avoid getting involved in the China-Taiwan conflict. The remarks from the French president came during his flight back from China, political reported. Earlier this month, Macron was on a three-day visit to China where he met the Chinese president, Xi Jinping. From the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war to the France-China bilateral ties, the two world leaders held talks on wide-ranging issues. During his interview with Politico on his way back, the French president stated that the great risk Europe is facing is getting caught up in a crisis that doesn't involve Europe in the first place. And there you go. OK, this is the beast starting to hate the whore because the beast, the the uh, European nations there, you know, they're on the tip of now. OK, listen, America is getting us dragged into these unnecessary conflicts. See, we don't you know, France is like, listen, we don't have a problem with China. See, we don't have a problem with these nations. America is the problem. So, you know, what's happening now? And, you know, another thing I should add is that when the Nord Stream pipeline got got blown up, it hasn't came out yet. But these European nations know that America is responsible for that. All right, and uh, the uh, Nord Stream pipeline is the is the direct source um, of how these European nations get their uh, you know natural gas and oil. And America cutting that off that's that's basically like a betrayal right there. All right, so now Europe is is, is pretty much wising up. And standing firm, they're like, yo, we don't, you know, we don't have a problem with Russia. We don't have a problem with China because we're allied with America. That's the reason why we're going to end up getting destroyed, because in proximity to these nations, the European nations are right there. OK, France, England, uh, uh, Spain, Germany, they're all right there next to Russia, man. OK, so if Russia wanted to press the red button. All those nations will be destroyed within seconds, see, while America is sitting pretty over across the water. So Emmanuel Macron understands it. OK, why? You know, why do you think that uh, uh, England pulled the Brexit years ago? See, because they don't want to be dragged into these unnecessary conflicts that America is starting with these powerful nations. In the interview, Macron talked about Europe being America's follower. Keep that in mind because we're going to get into that. The paradox would be that overcome with panic. We believe we are just America's followers. The French president said in an interview, the question Europeans need to answer, is it in our interest to accelerate a crisis on Taiwan? 
He says, no, the worst thing would be to think that we Europeans must become followers on this topic and take our cue from the U.S. agenda and a Chinese overreaction, he added. Just hours after the French president flight left from uh, Guangzhou to Paris, China, launched a three-day combat readiness patrol. The military exercises by the China forces came just days after Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen met the U.S. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Kevin McCarthy. Okay, so these European nations, uh, they know that any, any, any day now, any week, any month, America is going to go up in Taiwan and, you know, China is, is, is uh, going to defend their, their territory. OK, there's going to be a large scale conflict. But going into Revelation 17 and 16. All right. It said in the ten horns, which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. OK, separate from America. We, you know, we don't want to deal with America no more. We're going to side with Russia. We're going to side with China in destroying America because America is the problem of the earth. See, America is the bully on the block. You want to go into all these nations and dictate how their governments should be ran. You want to take their resources. Right. America has an embassy in pretty much every major nation that there is. See. But it says, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. OK, so the scriptures prophesied that there's going to come a time <clears throat> in which this is about to happen, in which even America's own allies, OK, the NATO and the EU are going to turn on her. They're going to turn on the whore and burn her with fire. Now, how are they going to be burned with fire by nuclear missiles? OK, nuclear missiles are going to be shot off from the from a. Uh, the NATO and the EU nations over to America. And this place is going to burn, man. Okay. This is what's, uh, this is what's about to take place very, very soon. So we can go here to, um, revelation 13 and one. All right. Cause this goes into the, um, understanding of who the seven heads are, who the 10 horns are and who, uh, the beast is okay. Who the whore is. All right, it's the, uh, Revelation 13 and 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. Okay, now who are these seven heads? All right, so when you go into the seven heads, the seven heads are the seven main governments ruled by Esau. Okay, because going back to Second Ezra 6 and 9, it says what Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So at the end of this world, of this current age, Esau, Edom is going to be ruling. All right. So these are the governments that are ruled by Esau. Now, uh, the seven heads came before the ten horns. OK, so the seven uh, heads are the provinces of the post-Roman pagan empire. OK, Britain. Uh, France, Spain, Portugal, Greece, Germania Minor, and uh, Germania Major. Now, uh, Germania Minor and, and Major, those were the names that the Romans uh, gave unto the region of Germany, um, Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, and Switzerland, okay, and then the, uh, the nation of Germany that exists now today. Okay, back in the Roman Empire, they were called Germania, okay, that was the name. All right, so out of these seven heads, all right, then came the ten horns, okay, which now is known as, well, the the original European Union members that was founded in 1958 was Belgium, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Spain, Denmark, and the UK or Britain, okay, and it was originally known as the European Economic Community, okay, those are the ten heads, the ten nations okay that that are uh part of the seven heads all right and the beast which i saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority okay now it says the beast which i saw was like unto a leopard now when you go into the leopard Okay, that, that represents the beginning of Esau's 
rulership, which was the Greeks, which was started by whom? Alexander the Great. Okay. And he was known to wear leopard skins when, when he went in, uh, into battle. Okay. Even adorning his, his uh, horse with leopard skins. Okay. So that represented the beginning of the Edomite rulership. Okay. His feet were the feet of a bear. His mouth is the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power. Now we know according to the scriptures that the dragon is another name for Satan. Okay. The devil. All right. So Esau gained his power, gained his rulership through Hashatan. Okay. So the devil gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Okay. This is why there's so much wickedness within the planet Earth. This is why, you know, pretty much all the laws that Esau puts on the books is adverse to the most high because, the, you know, this is a lawless satanic society. Okay. The, you know, Esau got his blessing through Satan, man. All right. So now when you go to um, Daniel 7 at 19, let's start here. It says, then I would know the truth of the fourth beast. OK, so when you consider um, the beast in the vision of Daniel. Right. So there were four beasts. Right. So the head of gold, that was the Babylonian Empire. That was the first beast. OK, the second beast, the breast of silver that rep uh, represented the Persian Empire. OK, and the thighs of brass was Greece. That was the third beast. And the fourth beast, the uh, legs of iron and feet, uh, part of iron and, and part of clay. That represents the Roman Empire. OK, so the fourth beast is the Roman Empire. OK, and it says which was diverse from all the others. OK, so the Roman Empire, which currently rules over the. Uh, this 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 uh, current system. OK, it was diverse from all the others. Now, how was it diverse? OK, when you deal with the other kingdoms, Babylon, um, uh, Persia, Greece. OK. They more so dealt with kings, okay, and, and their government was set up a, a different type of way, you know, but the Romans, you know, they had something like a king. He was an emperor, but he didn't have all the power. See, um, you had the Senate and you had uh, basically the, the uh, plebeians and the patricians, you know, kind of like the uh, Democrats and the Republicans today. Okay, so they were diverse from all the others and in some other ways, um, exceeding dreadful whose teeth were of iron, okay, when you see that iron, that goes into Rome, okay, because Rome went around the earth, well, the known world at that time, conquering with iron weapons, okay, Rome was known for its iron, okay, and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet, okay, so with these things, Esau went around the earth and defeated and uh, subdued the residue of the heathen, okay? And then basically the whole earth came under his control, okay? Verse 20, and of the 10 horns that were in his head and of the other which came up and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Now let's deal with that uh with that horn that came up and subdued the three. Okay? So when you deal with the horn, um that's speaking of America. Okay? Because America cuz cuz uh remember that in the beginning America came out of the British. All right? America was the uh, 13 colonies before they eventually um went to war against the British and gained its independence in 1776. OK, but it says. And of the ten horns that were in his head and of the other which came up and before whom three fell. Now, the three horns which which were conquered by this by this uh, by this little horn, if you will, were the English, the Spanish and the French. OK. Now, when you consider the English, the Spanish and the French, those were the three main colonizers of the so-called New World. OK, when you, when you look at Canada, North America and South America. What is you know, what are the main three languages that are spoken in this side of the world? English, Spanish and French. OK, the area of Canada was originally um, uh, owned or controlled by the French. Then the British came in and they took the uh, more Western part of it and they kept 
the, the uh, French still had their control in the Montreal, Quebec region, okay, which to this day, they, they, they still speak French. And I believe their French is still in uh, unofficial language or it is an official language of Canada is, is um, along with English, all right? And then the Spanish, okay, they pretty much got the whole of uh, South America and then Portugal uh, had um, Brazil, you know, then America obviously came out of the English. Okay, so America fought many wars between English, Spanish, and the French. All you got to do is just do the research, okay? Before 1776 and after, okay, America continued to war with the English, the Spanish, and the French, all right? Uh, yeah, verse 21, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Okay, this is speaking of the horn, okay, putting the Israelites into captivity, okay, until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth, be the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces, okay, now who rules over the whole earth. Okay, who who's who's uh dominion is the strongest on the earth, man? That's that's that of Esau Edom. Okay, the so called white man, okay, he is the one that runs the planet Earth. Okay, this is why he can say which nations can do what. You know, he can place sanctions on certain nations, man. Okay. Cause the Edomites are in control. Okay. Back to second Ezra. Six and nine, Esau is the end of the world. All right. Yeah, verse 24, and the 10 horns out of this kingdom are 10 kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings like, like we just went over. America subdued those uh, three kings, English, uh, the Spanish and the French. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. OK. So Esau indeed does speak great words against the Most High and he has indeed worn out the saints. OK. Esau has his, his, his worn Jake out, man. Okay, Jake don't even want to live no more, man. Jake is suicidal under the rulership of this devil. You see, Jake is completely forsaken the most high outside of the hopefully elect, man. Okay, and that's from being worn out. Okay, having to get up every day, slave. You got to pay taxes, man. Okay, you, you live in paycheck to paycheck. You know what I'm saying? Wear out the saints of the most high. And think to change times and laws. Okay, this, this devil... His has brought about all kind of unrighteous decrees, man. Unrighteous laws that he has on the books. Okay. And a hey, brother's bringing out every day, man. Every day, this 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 devil Esau man puts, you know, things to change times and laws. Okay, and they shall be given into his hands. So we have been given the Israelites have been given into the hands of the wicked of Esau until a time and times in the divining of time. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much trouble me. So my thoughts, right? Uh, troubled him and my countenance changed in me but i kept the matter in my heart okay so now we should understand what revelation 17 and 16 is talking about okay and the 10 and the 10 horns okay nato in the eu which thou sawest upon the beast okay these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Let me let me go up to uh let me see something real quick. Yeah. Matter of fact, let's just start at Revelation 17 to 1. 
And there came one of the seven angels, which had seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Okay, once again, that great whore is referencing America, which is known as Babylon the Great in the scriptures. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now, how have the kings of the earth committed fornication with Babylon the Great? They trade with her. They they import the, uh, the uh, culture of America. The U.S. dollar is the world reserve currency. OK, so they have mingled themselves in. OK, made their bed with America. OK, that's how they've committed fornication with this whore. OK, and the inhabitants in the inhabitants Salakia, of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now, wine represents the philosophies, the the uh, lifestyle. OK, so the wine of the whore, the wine of America has polluted his has made the inhabitants of the earth drunk. Okay, what is the main export of America? It's not silver, it's not gold, it's not the dollar, it's the culture. Okay, the culture of America has polluted the whole entire earth, man. Okay, the filthiness of this place has polluted the minds of, of other people. Okay, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Okay, now we just we just went into the beast, so you should understand what that is. Full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great. See, America is known as uh, Babylon the Great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the women drunken with the blood of the saints. Now, what does it mean to be drunken with the blood of the saints? Okay, America has shed the blood of the saints, man. Okay, they came over here. They, they killed up millions of, of so-called uh, Native Americans. Okay, they was killing up, you know, the, 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 the uh, you know, tribe of uh, Judah. Okay, the, the, the so-called Negro. All right. So America is full of the blood of the saints, man. That's how they gain this nation. OK, by rape, robbery and murder. OK, bloodshed, man. All right. And with the blood of the martyrs of Yahweh Shai. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and is yet. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains. OK, now mountains represent uh, a rulership kingdoms. OK, on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is the seven, and goeth into perdition. Okay, so this beast that's ruling upon the earth, okay, he is, it says, and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven. OK, so like we went into the seven heads and the ten horns. OK, this beast is part of it. OK, which is America, Babylon, the great. This beast pretty much runs the whole of the earth, including the seven. OK, the, the, the uh, seven heads and, and uh, the ten horns. All right. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet. OK, so at the time that, that John is, is uh, writing these things. OK, these these. um. These, these 10 kings receive no kingdom as of yet. Okay, because, you know, he's speaking of these things. You know, this, the, the, the beginning of it was during the Roman Empire. Because remember that the Romans were in power during the time of John the Revelator. Okay, they were the ones that were running things. Okay, but these 10 kings, the, the, the uh, seven heads and the 10 kings that would come later, they, they received not a kingdom as of yet. Eventually, they became kingdoms. Okay, once Rome uh, uh, fell... And then uh, the uh, barbarian tribes came in, set up their little kingdoms. Eventually, they, they grew into what is known today as the European nation, as the European Union. 
Okay, so at that time, they received no kingdom as of that time. But it says, these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Okay, they're going to give their strength unto Esau. All right, these shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and the king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. All right, and he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. All right. So basically, uh, this whore rules over the whole entire earth. But even right here in America, what is found here in, in America? Peoples, okay, multitudes, many, many, many people, nations and tongues. Okay, people that speak different languages, people that come from all different nations um, across the planet Earth. America is known as the great melting pot. So that, that right there is another clue telling you who the whore is. All right. So when you go to 16 and it says that the beast, okay, NATO in the EU shall hate the whore. And then you see Emmanuel Macron saying what? That we must reduce dependency on the U.S. Okay, before we get dragged into this Taiwan conflict. Okay, okay this is... The beginning of these things. Okay, these are the things that you must pay attention to and be aware of. Okay, because hey, if you don't have the true understanding of, of who the beast is and who the whore is according to the Bible, uh, you know, the things that are currently happening within the planet Earth are gonna make no sense to you. Okay, that that's why with these regular peon people, they don't they don't they can't get it, they can't understand. They they see these things are happening, but they can't plug it back in with the scriptures, right? So that's where the men of the Lord, the men of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai came in to make these things plain so that you can understand and you can be aware and prepare yourself spiritually for what is inevitable to come. All right, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson right there. Hopefully this lesson was edifying, uh, direct and straight to the point. In closing, call the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Rekai Kadash. And until next time, Shalom to the elect. Come Yahshua DTA and a Bible ball. Shalom.